The scripture says that whatever you ask God, the Father, in my name, He will give it you. Whatever you ask, according to His name, in His name. Look, I'm going I'm to make a statement right here. And if you think this statement is too minimal, then I'm just going to ask you to go back to square one with me and realize that anything your adversary does that comes against you will try to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. The head of the church, Jesus, told us that. That he will come like a thief and he will try to rob the blessings from you that God said belong to you. That's why I like to uh, use a statement that says, never speak for your enemy. Amen. Speak against him, but never speak for him. Amen. The children of Israel, uh, the spies went out and they came back and they said, "Why the, there's huge giants. Yeah, there's grapes that big in, in Cana in the promised land. There's honey and, and all of the things that are there. The water's in abundance. Uh, it, it will grow. It will do whatever we need. But they're giants. There's giants there. And they said, we are grasshoppers in their sight. Now, listen, the giants never said that. It was the children of Israel. They didn't understand that they were going, at that point, that they were going to have to drive those giants out. But God had equipped them with supernatural spiritual ability. And he would lead them in victory if they would rise up, but they wouldn't do it. The Bible says they wouldn't do it. And because of that, it so offended God, the Bible says, that it took them 40 more years to be able to go into that promised land. And that generation died off in the wilderness and could not cross over. Yes, they were not in Egypt, but they never were able to possess the promised land until the next generation came along. And there were two men... Uh, Caleb and Joshua. Everybody say Caleb and Joshua. And they were able to go in, the Bible says. And they led, of course, that. And by this time, Joshua and Caleb are in their 80s. They're in their mid to late 80s. Uh, when they cross over, uh, they actually may, one of them I, was probably in his 90s already. And, uh, and he said, I want that position over there that God has promised me. 40 years ago, he said, God told me I could have that piece of land. Joshua, Caleb said that. He said, I want to take it. And they said, well, there's giants up there. He said, then I'll drive them out. Amen. And the Bible says, uh, he went and took that place in his 90s. And God worked with him. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. So you're never too old to be used by God. And I can tell you, you're never too young. If you understand, you have authority and you have a spiritual power that has been given to you in the name that's activated uh, by the Word of God and the name of Jesus. When you breathe that name on lips of faith in relation to the Christ, the Son of the living God, you can be sure that all three realms, heaven, earth, and hell, that all three realms come to attention, the Bible says. They have to take notice. Come on, touch someone and say, you're anointed. Come on, just tell them that. You're anointed. Put Mark chapter 13 up if you would please. Jesus has given that authority and he teaches in Mark chapter 13 about how the Spirit of God and how the kingdom of God operates. Mark chapter 13, put verse 34 up on the screen for it, uh, uh, so we can see it or else I'll turn to it and just read it. But it's, uh, he talks here about the Son of Man. He begins to talk, and Jesus used parables. And when he would use parables, parables, of course, they didn't have videos, they had parables. Are y'all listening? It's not like they were making a, a, a 60 second Facebook thing, you know, that you were doing. No, no, no. Jesus then would, would use a story, he would use a parable, and he was a teacher. And he would use those parables, but he, and, and he would define them many times. He would say, the Son of Man or the Kingdom of God or the Kingdom of Heaven is like. 
And then he would tell those things. Here he says the Son of Man is as a man. He's talking about the authority that belongs here to every believer. He's teaching how the kingdom of God works in you. He said the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and he gave authority to his servants. Come on, somebody just waved their hands like that. That's me. Uh, to his servants and to every man his work. He gave authority to his servants. He gave that authority to every person to do what they are supposed to do for the master. And he commanded the, the, the guard, the porter, to watch. I like to call that the Holy Spirit uh, who is with us today. So Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a man who goes and he gives his authority. Uh, today that's oftentimes called a power of attorney. To do business in his name and to take care of his things until he returns again. He uses this same parable and in, in this type in more than one place. He does it several times when he's teaching in the four gospels. That's something you and I have to understand that uh, the Bible says that we have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness, come on, Colossians 1, and we have been translated, we've been delivered from the power of darkness, translated into the kingdom of his dear son. You might have been over here not knowing that you had victory available to you or just everything in the flesh yourself trying to uh, get by in life the way that we do. Uh, but you can be sure Jesus is letting the cat out of the bag and the Apostle Paul is telling it to you and me, to the church, when he says that we were delivered from the power of darkness. Listen, darkness has power. It has fear. It has that blindness that's involved with it. It has the, uh, the fear of the unknown, the unexpected. And it also creates uh, a, a, almost a fantasy in the mind of people. Darkness is that way. Now, he wasn't talking about the moon and the sun when he's talking about darkness. He's talking about spiritual darkness. When people are outside of the kingdom of God, the Bible says God is light. Somebody shout light. Uh, and when we're outside of that, we don't realize. So we hear reports on the news and fear will come in because there's darkness. Things are out of our control. Uh, we're not able and capable of doing near as much efficiently in dark as we are in light. And the scripture says there is a power then of darkness. Spiritually speaking, if the devil can keep you in darkness, when it comes to your benefits, the, the power of the Holy Ghost, the person of Jesus, the revelation of his word on a daily basis, then he will keep you in darkness unless you uh, realize that God has actually given you light and you act on it, you work on it. Uh, the entrance of his word, uh, one writer says, the entrance of his word brings light and makes wise the simple. One translation says the uninformed. Before you came into the kingdom of God, you might not have known that Jesus is a healer. You lay hands on the sick, and the sick get well. Uh, the Greek says it like this, hands they will lay and well they shall be. Sometimes it's an instant miracle and sometimes it's the process of recovery. But in the name of Jesus, we lay hands on the sick and we expect the sick to get well. You say, what if somebody doesn't get well? What if they die? Then I'll preach their funeral. Hell can't threaten us with heaven. Come on, uh, Paul said that if I live, I'm going to minister Christ to you. But if I die, it's a gain for me. Oh, hallelujah. Can we get a revelation that you passed from death unto life when you said yes to Jesus, the moment you breathed your last breath, you hadn't stopped thinking. You haven't stopped living. You just step over into the kingdom of heaven and look out, you're about to get a body that doesn't wear out. Oh, hallelujah. Heaven is like a, a mere image to a large degree of earth right here, but without the curse in operation. 
Can you imagine how you would be in life if you would have never doubted, if you would have never feared, if you would have never been uninformed, if you would have never acted in, in an ignorant manner or in an uninformed manner? Can you imagine where you would be in life if everything you thought about doing that was positive and good, you, have, you had done it already? And every time you think about doing something and you put your hand to it, every time, 100% of the time, from the time you were born? Can you imagine where you would be in life today? Uh, can you agree you'd be soaring? The problem is there's a curse in operation on planet Earth. That happened when mankind fell. And Satan, for a period of time, is allowed to be here, the Scripture says. But there's coming a day. I said there's coming a day. When, of course, he will be bound and cast into the lake of fire. Until that time, when a man or a woman gets in Christ uh, and receives the Word and the Spirit of God, an anointing comes upon you. Come on, somebody shout, I'm anointed. The Holy Spirit, and then we begin to grow and learn uh, from, from the process of a baby to uh, a more mature and continuing to go and develop and develop and develop by sticking with the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And then being what James 1 says, doers of the Word of God and not hearers only. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We are not people that just come and just hear the Bible. I heard somebody one time, they said something like, well, at the church that we go to, uh, we really don't believe in all of that praying for people. We don't believe in all that. We just teach the Bible. I'm like, what Bible do you teach? You, you don't believe in taking authority over your adversary? Do you think Jesus was playing tiddlywinks of the day he poured the Holy Ghost out? Was that an accident? That the Spirit of God begin to dwell in people and believers begin to cast out devils. Believers begin to lay hands on the sick and the sick got well in the name of Jesus. What Bible are you reading out of? How can you read the Word of God and not see that? It's there all through the Scripture in type in the Old Testament and in reality in the New Testament. Jesus acted it out. Two-thirds of His miracles were physical healing miracles that are recorded. No, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Wave your hand at me if you've ever been healed of cancer by, by the Lord. Wave your hand. Stand up real quickly uh, if you've ever been healed of cancer. Quickly, quickly stand up real quick. I just, want, I just want people to know that Jesus is the same. Jesus is the same. But I, listen, I just want you to know, if you read the Bible, uh, there are names, there are words. Guard your heart. Proverbs 4, 20 say, uh, 23 says, Guard your heart diligently with all diligence, for out of it flow the forces of life. King James uses the word issue. You'll notice in the margins of your Bibles, uh, many of them say the force of life. Well, God has filled you, and He is not the force of death. He's the one who defeated death. He is the force of life, and there are forces of life. And the scripture says that we are to guard our heart because when you guard your heart, that means you're not allowing words or seeds, the Bible calls them seeds, that come to you every day. You're not allowing them to get into your spirit, now listen, which is the seed bed of the miraculous. So you're saying, no, I'll cast down that other imagination and I will begin to praise God instead. Not letting fear take root. Listen, fear's there. I said fear's there. Uh, that attack can come against you and you can have all of those emotions of fear and doubt try to rise up, but then faith speaks up in you and you begin to say, well, uh, that situation is to be feared. It is to be respected. It's to be dealt with, but in Jesus' name, God has already dealt with that at Calvary 2,000 years ago. With his stripes, I was healed, so I anticipate something is going to happen according to the word and not according to that situation. I've got other forces. I've got another issue coming out of me, and it's the issue of I will live and not die. He will fulfill and give me length of days. 
Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I think we ought to aim for that. I think I'll aim for 120. You say, what if you don't live to be 120? I'm going to live to be forever. Be nice if I could live here to be 120. I'd like to be like Moses. The Bible says Moses, his eye was not dim, his ear was not deaf, and his arm was not weak. Woo, glory to God. And that guy's, in, he's over 100 years old. And he was still strong. Did anybody see the, the news? That 98-year-old man uh, that did the parachute jump? Did y'all see that? I think he landed like at Normandy. He was the first person at, at, one, of the, at one of the main launches in, in uh, World War II. He was the first person to land on the beach. He's 98. I thought, I'm going to be at least that strong when I get 98. They're interviewing that guy, and I wouldn't have said that he's a day over 97. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> that guy was amazing. He just had strength to him. Kind of a tall, stately-looking gentleman. 98, he was the first paratrooper to land. And all around him, people were being shot out of the air. His memories must be amazing. But he made a decision. At 98, I'm going to re-jump like I did when I was just a young boy. And he jumped and landed again. Woo, hallelujah. He said, I'm jumping for all of my buddies. Most of them are gone on into eternity. Oh, I don't know about you, but when we're 98 years old, uh, I don't care if I got a walking cane. At 98 years old, I'm going to use it to club the devil in Jesus' name. Come on, how about you? You have authority through the name of Jesus and the word. Jesus gave it to you. He, that's part of the uh, power of the Holy Ghost. The scripture says uh, in Acts 1.8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You'll receive power. And he says, you'll be witnesses for me in, in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and all the other most parts of the world. Galveston Island, Hitchcock. Lamarck, Clear Lake, Houston, Europe, Central America. You'll be a witness. The word witness is a beautiful Greek word. It's the word martyr. We get the word martyr from it. And he said, when you die to yourself and come alive to his power, you will become a witness of the goodness of God, the power of God, the grace of God. And when you begin to declare a thing according to the word of God and you believe it in your heart, sometimes your head will tell you something different. You get that head in order. I said, get your head in order. Can I say this to you and, and, and it be understood? Tell yourself what to think. Don't let situations always dictate what you think. And, and for crying out loud, don't let public opinion dictate what you think and be wise enough to challenge your thoughts from yesterday that now have become habitual mindsets. Amen. Oftentimes they're inherent. But oh, when Jesus comes in, the scripture says we become new creations in Christ. So we're in the world, but we factor the world into the working of the kingdom of God. We do not maintain all the same doubts, fears, all of the, uh, of the expectations of, of failures, of not obeying God. And we've all got a track record. I don't care who you are, you, you've got that track record. But when you said yes to Jesus, the power to override that curse. Listen, mamas and daddies need to be praying for their children. Grandparents, lay your hand on those grandchildren, on their little gentle heads, and you let them hear you say the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone say, I have authority. I'm anointed. Say it again, I'm anointed. I heard this great story. I love it. Sergio, come help me. I love this great story. Doesn't sound like much of a story, but I like it. The scripture says in 2 Peter, we are to resist the devil. Everybody say resist. 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 We are to resist. Don't give in. Resist. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The scripture says humble yourself to God. I'd like to tell you when you humble yourself to the plan of God for your life, 
And you say, well, my faults, my ambitions, my all of that, I'm going to factor that through the plan that God has for my life. I may not know it overnight, but, but that's, my, that's my goal. I'm going to find it. And then when the enemy tries to come against your life on a daily basis somewhere or another, you resist. You can resist through wisdom. You resist sometimes even with education. You can resist financially. You can use money and resist. Uh, you can resist with your words. But more than anything else, you resist by the Holy Ghost that lives in you. When things look difficult and out of your reach and out of your control, beyond your ability, the arm of the Lord is not short, the Bible says. The eye of the Lord is not uh, dim. The ear of the Lord is not deaf. And you tell your adversary, the devil, in the name of Jesus, go, get out of my life. Go, get out of my life. Go, get out of my life. Don't just historically deal with the aftermath. No, you rise up in advance. Yeah. You take the full armor of God, the Bible calls it in Ephesians 6. The helmet of salvation. Breastplate of righteousness. Woo, what a word. I think I'll do a whole year just on righteousness before long. We do not need victim consciousness. We need righteousness consciousness. We don't need sin consciousness. We need righteousness consciousness. I'm not going to get up here and, and hammer you over sins that, that everybody has committed at some point uh, in, in a crowd. If I started naming sins, well, everybody in here uh, would say at some point in their life, one or more of those sins, some people have broke all 12 of them. There's only 10. It took that a minute to sink in. Uh, no, 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 no. But in your spirit, man, you rise up and resist. Uh, you resist the devil. And the Bible says he will flee. He will flee. If I read that to you in the Greek, you would love it. That word flee there literally means to run like a convict who's trying to get away from a posse. That's the thought that it is right there. Listen, when you rise up, it's like there's a new sheriff in Dodge. You rise up in your inner man, and hell might have been stealing from you, but when you rise up in Jesus' name, you're going to get your health back. You're going to get your mind back. You're going to get your money back. Come on. You're going to get that, that call and that anointing that God has for you. That's coming back. Ooh, glory to God. But the Scripture says you activate. You resist. You pray. That's why we pray. We ask God. Uh, uh, John 16 says, we ask the Father. Jesus said, it's in red in your, in your red letter Bible. Jesus said it. The scripture says that whatever you ask God, the Father, in my name, he will give it you. Whatever you ask according to his name, in his name. Look, if you ask God in Jesus' name, if you can go out and commit adultery, I can just tell you right now, he's going to say no. You own your own if you're doing that. You say, well, if I can ask him anything in my name, now listen to me, listen to me. Jesus taught all through the Gospels, he said, things like this. I want God's will done on earth just like it is in heaven. Do you think there's any poverty in heaven? Can I get two amens? Do you think there's any sickness in heaven? Do you think there's fear, doubt, and unbelief in heaven? We want that manifested like it is in heaven right here on earth. We have an authority. He has given us that authority. He said, I've gone away, but I've given you authority to do business in my name until I return. I could give you four different uh, examples where Jesus uses that kind of dialogue. You and I did not just get saved and sit around and do nothing. You have been called and anointed to be a living witness for Jesus Christ. Uh, when you have a chance, talk about it. The rest of the time, live it. Just live it in faith. Live it in love. Live it in joy. How many of you think Christians ought to be happy? 
How about happy even on a bad day? Yes. You say, well, uh, if I was being happy on a bad day, it'd have to be because I was just doing it by faith. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing how that'll turn around. It's amazing how that'll turn around. Yeah, there was, a, there was a bully in one of those little old country schools I heard this years ago. Little old bully. He was a kid always bullying. He was a little bit bigger than all the other kids. And, and he was always picking on them and hitting them and stealing their lunch money and all that kind of stuff. One day he's sitting there and he's just writing down a little list like he's writing this list. And this little old wiry little kid kind of comes up to him, and little, not as tall as he is, just kind of, you know, just kind of little old kid walks up there and feisty little old boy walks up and says, Hey, what are you doing writing? I didn't know you could write. What are you doing writing? He said, I'm just writing down the name of all the people that I can whoop. <laughs> that little boy says, let me see that. And he looks at it and he sees his name on it. He said, hey, my name's on this. You can't whip me. Hey. And, and the bully said, oh, okay, I'll take your name off. <laughs> your adversary, the devil, wants you to think that he can whoop you. But when you come in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Ghost and you use that name in faith, you, my friend, are going to have victory. It may not manifest instantly, but if you'll hold fast the confession of your faith, cast down the imaginations that try to come that are contrary to the Word of God, and where fear used to rise up, now you go ahead and fill your mouth with faith and let that faith get into your heart and into your spirit. I tell you in the name of Jesus, you will live victorious through the blood of Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, and as a citizen of the kingdom of power, which is the kingdom of God, and it will manifest in your life individually, in your family, in your marriage, in your business, in your health. I tell you, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, let's give God all the glory today, church. Glory to God today and forever. To learn more, visit WalterHallam.net. Here you'll find a list of resources to help you in your daily walk with Christ. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why is there poverty in the world? Why can't I seem to recover from a loss? Pastor Walter Hallam tackles these and many more tough questions in his book, The Big Why. You'll learn how to view your memories as treasures and to cherish each one as they fuel you on to live a life full of faith and confidence. Make a bold confession. Make a bold confession. God, do you have another governor over your soul? Jesus rose from the dead. 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 Jesus Christ satisfies your soul when nothing else will.